throughout the campaign, we're going to be hearing a lot from Canadians on all of our programs and all of our platforms. Uh, the campaign is really about them. It's about what people are feeling, what people want to see by way of change, and that's what will drive the choices they make at the ballot box on October 21st. And we know, uh, we're hearing it, the cost of living and issues around affordability are at the top of the list for uh, a lot of Canadians in this election, even with the economy performing relatively well, many Canadians feel like they're being left behind. So what's happening? And could there be a disconnect between the voters and the political parties? Pedro Antonesh is the Chief Economist for the Conference Board of Canada. He joins me now. Good to see you again. Uh, thanks good for being here. You, yeah. uh, look, why don't we start by having you give us a sense of, because uh, we're going to hear a lot about this in the campaign, mm -hmm. uh, that the economy is underperforming, that it's doing really well. So what's your sense as an expert here about where we are in the Canadian economy? How are we doing? Well, uh, I mean, the reality is the Canadian economy is doing not too bad. Uh, if you look at uh, essentially what we worry the most about during an economic cycle, it's employment. And uh, in fact, uh, Canada's had a phenomenal year in terms of job creation uh, over the last uh, eight months or so. It's quietened down a little bit in the last right. couple, but we're off to a very good start. And that's going to generate an awful lot of income for households going into uh, the, the latter half of this year and into 2020. So that's very positive. It's a pillar of household spe uh, household spending has been a pillar of the economy in, in recent years, and we can't see that not continuing, especially as uh, you know interest rates just aren't going up anymore. So right. that's the other piece uh, behind that uh, that household picture. And I, and I think as we we get into this debate over uh, economic measures and what parties will be offering in the campaign, it's it might be useful to sort of look at. Uh, you know, how we compare to other countries. So when Canadians look at their own situation, and we're going to get into that because uh, mm -hmm. there's some anxiety out there, but mm -hmm. I mean, how are we faring when we compare ourselves to other like nations? Well, I, I think, yeah, no, take a look at our, our situation with respect to the fiscal situation, with respect to uh, economic potential and economic growth. Uh, I, I do think there are some concerns. Oh, mm -hmm. and the, the, the last piece that I don't want to forget to mention is uh, interest rates. Uh, we have interest rates slightly above, at least on the short end, slightly above zero, which means that we do have a room to maneuver should we end up in a business cycle. So right. we're in, in much better shape than I would say certainly the European or the OECD uh, on average. Um, there are problems, though. Uh, you know, having looked at uh, consumers uh, being the, the the pillar of economic growth. You know, we keep saying we're an export dependent, export supposedly export led economy. Uh, that's not really uh, looking very. Uh, yeah, what's happening? Well, uh, I mean, there's two issues. Uh, one is with respect to capacity. So when we think about traditional manufacturing going into the U.S., think about the auto sector, for example. We really haven't invested in in those sectors, so we don't have the capacity really to grow. And that those investment levels continue to be very weak uh, compared to to what we've seen historically. So that is not going to be. Uh, it's not a good sign for contributing to growth or to productivity. Uh, and then the other piece, of course, is in, in some of those sectors where we had been doing well, agri-foods, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're really getting hit hard by uh, what's happening with China. So these are the big concerns for, you know, what I would say for Canada's uh, segments. The other big concern, of course, is with respect to it, external risks and how the global economy fares. So that's a whole other bag of uncertainty. So let, let's draw down to some of the survey information we see here where, you know, uh, Canadians rank affordability issues largely as their number one concern, which mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, uh, it's not unusual to see surveys where people talk about the economy and jobs. It seems like a, uh, it's a reflex thing to do uh, at election time because that's clearly one of the big issues. But mm -hmm. if the economy is doing well, um, and you know, you, and, and yet you have this anxiety uh, in the population where they feel that they can't afford things, that their wages maybe aren't keeping paces. So, do you have an idea of why that's happening? Well, it's interesting because, um, I mean, the reality, the reality is that, uh, in fact, wage growth in Canada uh, has been really quite strong over the last 15 years. It, it, what did slow down a little bit, we heard a lot about this last year. Uh, we had very strong labor markets, a low unemployment rate, and we couldn't understand why wages had been uh, very weak in terms of their annual growth. But, but, but that now was there's some catch-up happening now. There's well, now, it, more yeah, we're that. back to where uh, wages are growing quite strongly. In fact, it's more worrisome on the other side of the, of the picture is that uh, 
wages are growing so much above inflation that we wonder if we don't have you know productivity gains uh, can we really afford this can we really sustain this kind of wage growth so, so wonder like, it makes me wonder why do people feel they're they're losing ground then well I, I think uh, well I, the only th explanation that comes to, to mind is uh, because purchasing power is strong uh, it, it must be related to the the, uh, the very rational uh, uh, choice by Canadians most Canadian households to take on a lot of debt mm -hmm. uh, to leverage themselves as much as possible to 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 uh, uh, to buy uh, real estate. Uh, it, I say it's a rational choice because, of course, if you put your money in the bank, you earn a ne net negative, right? You're right. not very earning much in terms of interest payments. Yet, if you leverage yourself, put your money into housing, housing prices have been when increasing. interest rates are low, right? Yeah, it's the exactly. So it's been uh, it's uh, and I think with the uh, increases that we did see in interest rates over the last year and a half or so. Uh, that did cause some anxiety. I, I think going forward, though, we're not seeing rates come uh, come up. In fact, uh, yields on bonds, on long-term bonds, have come down substantially globally and in the U.S. Uh, that's going to that's going to take down mortgage rates. So I think that piece of it will will perhaps go away. Are we? Here, here's another thing that they mentioned. You know, they talk they talk about the taxes. We're hear a lot about taxes. So like, are we? It's maybe an unfair question. Are, are we overtaxed? I mean, when you look at Canada, are we overtaxed? Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's that's always a good question. Um, I mean, we have. Uh it depends on what viewpoint you look at, uh, but if you look at the burden that we have in terms of delivering health care, mm -hmm. other social programs, infrastructure, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, when we look at the, the, the government finances right now, uh, there's not a lot of room to maneuver, certainly at the provincial level. Uh, we've done quite well at the federal level uh, over the last number of years. There has been some room to maneuver there, but we've seen, what we've seen is more spending. So, uh, at the, it currently, with the deficits at the federal and provincial levels, I, I don't see a lot of room for lowering taxes, right? Uh, all right, so uh, it, you know, the political parties will, will play on some of those anxieties that we're, we're seeing in, in the Canadian population. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, what, what, what should Canadian voters take into account, and if, if, if I can put this to you, uh, when they're hearing those messages about, uh, about their own situation? I mean, is there a way to place themselves? Are they talking about me? Uh, does that relate to me? Is that one way to sort of figure out which message resonates? Well, I, I do think we need to ask questions uh, about what these uh, these policies may, how these policies may affect individuals, and, and Canadians have to weigh those. Uh, uh, one one that I often, or that we often hear, is about, uh, for example, the middle class. And um, mm -hmm. you know, who, who, I think voters should ask themselves: Are they the middle class? Who is the middle it's class? Hard to, it's yeah, hard to define. That definition uh, seems to be a moving target. A moving days. target. And so um, I think we, you know, ind as individuals, as households, they should look at the uh, at the at the policy. Policies, how they uh, feel they affect their own uh, their own situation and their own views about what's important to them. Uh, you know, I'm surprised, for example, that we haven't seen healthcare pop up as much. I think if you still yeah, it were will. To, I think if you if you were to ask the older uh, that baby boom cohort what their priorities are, I bet you healthcare is yep. still in there, number one. Um, but it's interesting that we have seen other priorities uh, uh, emerge for Canadian households. I think the millennials, if they if they get out there and vote. Uh, I think have different priorities uh, around, uh, uh, um, you know, essentially around the environment, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, it'll be an interesting, uh, uh, I guess, uh, series of policy policies. Yeah. And, 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 and you can make a case that affordability is part of every one of those kind of priorities, right? I mean, that's... Uh, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. And, and I think for, uh, f uh, f you know, we often hear this too, that young people are, uh, are more strained. Uh, but of course, that's a natural progression because wages are weaker when you're uh, earlier uh, in the yeah. workforce, et cetera. But I think overall, we are seeing a, a situation that's, in, that's pretty good for most Canadians. All right. Pedro Antunes, always good to have your perspective. Thanks again. It's a pleasure, Peter.